the chapter 13, which is called Simple Linear Regression. All of these terms have to be explained at some point. And it's not called simple because it's simple, even though it is pretty simple. Uh, it's simple because we're talking about a single x variable as opposed to many x variables, which we'll learn about in chapter 14, which is called multiple linear regression. So it might be called single. Maybe a better single linear regression might be a better word, but a simple meaning that it's only one variable. Now, speaking of just putting this into a larger context of the entire course, if you think about it in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, 7, 8, we're always talking about one variable. For example, what is the average of, let's say, somebody's uh, weight? Okay, what is the standard deviation of somebody's weight? But it's one variable. In chapter 9, we talk about the hypothesis testing. You know, H0, the average weight is equal to 120 pounds. So it's still one variable. And um, chapter, no, uh, chapter 10 already, we started talking about two variables. The average weight compared of, let's say, um, uh, that won't be a female and female, it's not a good example. Say uh, black students to white students, their average weight, okay? So we're talking really, if you think about it, two variables. We're talking about the weight variable and then the race variable. But the race, but one variable is categorical, categories, and the other variable is continuous, just a bunch of numbers. In chapter 11, we talked about two categoricals, I'm sorry, chapter 11 is simply an extension of chapter 10. We talked about, let's say, the, the average weight of, of blacks to whites to Asian students. So now we're still talking about two variables, the weight variable and the categories of race. So race versus age. Chapter 12, which is the chi-square chapter, we talked about, again, two variables, somebody's race and, let's say, what kind of car they drive, or with somebody's sex and if they passed or failed the test. So there's two variables. There's the sex variable along the rows, and then there's the, the, um, the passing or fail variable along the columns. So there's still two variables, but they're two categorical variables. In chapter 13, we move into, again, two variables, but this time they're both continuous. So we have two continuous variables, and the main point of the chapter is to see if we continuous, two continuous variables, and the main point of the chapter, you want to quiet, I can't, I can't, if I hear you guys talking from the back of the room, it's too loud. Whatever, just, it's all right, I, I accept the apology, just keep it down, I don't want to hear it. Uh, two continuous variables, and, um, and a simple concrete example will make this um, a lot more uh, understandable. I still hear you guys. Guy, whisper, so I don't, if I'm hearing you 30 feet away, you're not, you're not whispering. Please whisper, but don't talk at all. The height variable is the x variable. The weight variable is the y variable. Again, y, the traditional horizontal y axis, I'm sorry, vertical y axis. And what we would like to do is basically talk about what is the relationship between height and weight. Now, as a business major, business department, we don't care so much about height and weight. I mean, I can't imagine a business application of that. But I'm using that as a generic example. And we'll use another example, perhaps, in a few minutes about advertising and sales. In other words, the more advertising you put into, a, into a, a company, the more sales you might get. And the question is, is that really true? Is there a relationship between those two expenditures, or those, those, the expenditure of advertising versus sales? But let's talk about height and weight. So in order to start analyzing the, the, the relationship between height and weight, if there is a relationship, which of course we know there is, but sometimes you have two variables you really want to know, is there a relationship like uh, a certain chemical in the blood and, and somebody's blood pressure? You don't know if those, two, those things are related, so you do a research study to try to find out. Um, so the kind of data you're going to collect, which could also be expressed as X and Y, would be that you could take a first person as part of your sa sample. Of course, you can't analyze every single person in the entire world. You can only analyze a subset, which is called a sample. Hopefully, the subset is re representative, so it's a random sample, et cetera. Um, but that's easier said than done. And the first person might be six foot one and may weigh 162 pounds. The next person might be five foot eight and may weigh 147 pounds. The next person might be five foot nine and may weigh 145 pounds. Now, you have a paradox here. This person is taller but weighs less. Well, of course, no one expects that the height perfectly predicts your weight. There's always going to be some amount of variation and some amount of error. We'll get into that. Um, and of course, you collect you know, many pairs of numbers. The more, the better, depending on your resources and how accurate you want to be. Um, 
So the next question we, you have to ask yourself is, what are you going to do with these numbers? And the answer is you're going to plot them, because like I'm tr trying to teach you the whole term, if you can make a picture of something, uh, you might as well do it, because it helps you visualize what you're trying to understand. But before we get into the picture, I want to give you some terminology. The x variable is called the independent variable. Independent variable. And the y variable is called the dependent variable. And the reason why it's called a dependent variable, of course, it depends upon the x. In other words, the, the basically the model is that the x, at least hypothetically, we're going to try to prove that or disprove that, the x has an impact on the y. In this case, it makes a lot of sense that the, the somebody's height has an impact on their weight. It's not realistic to say somebody's weight has an impact on their height. Now, sometimes it's hard to figure out which is the x and which is the y, but in this case, it's pretty obvious. Unless you believe, for example, that somebody's weight, they may be in some science fiction planet, maybe if somebody's really heavy, the gravity makes them shorter. Is that conceivable? It's conceivable. It's not, pr it's not true on planet Earth, but it can be on some other planet where people are made out of more elastic kind of stuff. And if they're heavy, it makes them shorter. So maybe the, w the weight affects their height, right? And also, I'd point out that we're probably, it doesn't make any sense to mix males and females in this kind of an analysis. If you're trying to figure out how many hours you study and your grade point average, maybe there it makes sense to mix males and females. But analysis of weight and height, you'd want to keep each group you know, separate. Um, just to make more sense out of the data. So coming back to the next, the, so the first objective of the chapter for understanding what we're trying to do here, which I haven't fully explained yet, is we're going to graph it. So for example, um, this is, I don't know, five feet, five foot one, five foot two, five foot three, five foot five, six feet, six foot one, six foot two, etc. This is the weight, uh, 140 pounds, 145 pounds, 150 pounds, 155 pounds, 160 pounds, I'm just doing this very rough, just to point out. So you're going to take the first person is six foot one, weighs 162. So I'll put a dot right over there. The next person weighs five foot eight, which is I mean it's five foot eight inches tall, which is around five feet. So it's around here, and 147 might be something like this. The next person weighs five foot nine, which is here, but weighs in fact even a drop less. So I'm not going to start, but, but, let's, but let's imagine filling up this chart. Now this picture is called a scatter diagram or scattergram sometimes. I can think, you can imagine why it's called that. And imagine if you had another dot here, another dot here, another dot here, another dot here. These are you know, filling up all the <laughs> dots that you have. And this is like pretty, you know, you'd probably imagine you're going to get something like this when you're all said and done. Right? You'd probably get a picture like that if you actually did a real life survey of 25 people's heights and weights, 25 males, let's say. So the next question, so, so what, the next, what do we do next? So the first objective of the chapter is to, to simply plot the data. So again, by the way, everything we're telling you is, gonna ha is hopefully going to be reflected in the homeworks. I'm not even sure if I picked the online homeworks yet. So for those doing it online, I may have to wait till later today. Um, but the next, so, but, and likewise, the question on the test. The question on the test, will, we'll start out with a pair. I'll give you like five or ten pairs of numbers and then tell you, part A, make the scatter diagram. So you graph the X and the Y like you do back in high school or even earlier, then I would tell you, so you tell me, so what's the second thing to do? What do you think the second thing to do? And after we have the uh, scattergram down, what's the next thing to do? Now, some of you probably had this in some other economics course, for example, or had this even in high school, but we really like you to try to use your intuition. Like, if you're seeing this for the very first time, what would you do with these numbers? Yeah. Right. In other words, it's called linear regression. So we're going to learn at some point when we get into more of the theory of the chapter, we're going to point out that one of the assumptions, that it, remember every chapter has assumptions. You can't just develop a formula in a vacuum. So one of the assumptions is that we're dealing with a linear or a straight line relationship as opposed to a situation like this. If you have a bunch of, like, like, like you know, X and Y can have this kind of a pattern. Now, this is a clearly a mathematical pattern. It's not like random. But it's not going to, if you have data like this, you can't use chapter 13. Chapter 13 only works when you have data that's more or less linear, which, you know, follows a straight line like this, or even the opposite, where if one gets bigger, the other gets smaller. It's still a straight line relationship. But when you have a picture like this, you have to use chapter 14. We'll learn about that in chapter 14. But Kelvin is suggesting that you try to summarize your data by a straight line. Because if it is a straight line, basically everybody more or less follows the same pattern with a couple of you know, small exceptions. Let's figure out what the straight line is. And basically, how do you figure out the straight line? Um, well, again, at this point, we'll just do it by, by, by taking a ruler, which I wish I had in my hand. Maybe I'll put down this for a second. Good idea. OK, so you can take the a ruler and, and sort of play with it and say, which line? Does this line seem to fit the data? No. 
Does this line? No. Does this line? Maybe. This line? You know, I'm just giving, I mean, somebody can argue, well, this is better than that. But the point is, something like this pretty much follows the best.